Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, I'm restarting this video. I started, started turned into kind of a weird rambling mess, um, but I'm, I'm blaming jet lag. Um, I have to be overseas a decent amount of time. I actually am required to be overseas a certain amount of time for tax purposes. That sounds weird and shady, but uh, but if believe it or not, it's, it's not. Uh, but anyway, I, there's a mail here I'm going to read, and then it feeds into a different thing that was going on, so we can kind of combine two topics together. It says, do comic creators hold animosity toward manga? It says, Dear per hey, Perch Perchington Sama. Oh, very nice. I had a conversation with some friends about comics and manga, and one of them mentioned how they felt American comic creators have animosity toward manga. I wanted to see if you also believe this is true, and if so, why? Does it only extend to manga or other foreign media? Thanks for all you do. Um, thanks for listening. Um, and that's the end of the video. That's how I'm supposed to go off. Uh, no, uh, so... I don't believe that a vast number of comic creators hate manga. I think there are some who are jealous of manga, uh, mainly jealous of kind of the money it brings in and the attention it gets. And I think for a lot of comic creators, they feel like um, manga is kind of unduly praised, meaning, you know, people will heap tons and tons and tons of praise onto manga and it can affect, you know, do no wrong. And, it is, uh, it's, you know, it, it's just, it's just perfect in every way. Manga is just the best in the world. And, and, uh, and, and that's, that's the perception that some comic creators have toward the, the dialogue that is often that they see on Twitter and, and news sites and everything else. Because in fairness, a lot of people use manga as it is perfect. It's everything is wonderful. Why is it perfect? Because it's telling, it's not telling woke stories, you know, with, uh, putting having gay chicks in it for south park um it's just uh you know it's just just telling the stories people want to listen to long is wonderful well it's more complicated than that and so this feeds into a thread i was having on twitter with somebody who i'm i'm reasonably certain uh probably dislikes me uh but nobody mentioned that it was actually a nice polite calm thread Pe two people talk nobody shit on each other it was great um <clears throat> even though i'm i was i'm irritable for a lot of different reasons uh, you may have noticed. Uh, but in general, the, the, the thing that manga has really going for it is that manga went where the people are. It went where the readers are. And so before you even get to whether the content is good or bad or you know better or writing or better art or any of that kind of stuff, you would simply have to look to the, the marketing strategy, the market strategy, which was it, it went to big box stores. It went to the Targets. It went to the Walmarts. It went to as many places as possible. And if you go there, you'll notice that like My Hero Academia or Demon Slayer, the first issue, the first Tonkabon volume is there. And it's priced to sell. You know, Target was selling for six bucks. Uh, it's a hell of a deal. But if you've been, uh, you know, hooked on manga and other things, you may notice that, you know, My Hero Academia is up to volume like 5,038. No, it's not one piece level. But it's, it's got lots and lots of volumes. It's got tons. And you won't see those volumes at Target. Well, why not? Well, you know, sometimes Target will carry a couple of more recent ones. But generally speaking, it goes for the entry hook. It puts the first volume out there. It puts it at a low price point. It gets people sold. They move a heavy volume there because it's, uh, you know, quick, easy, and, and simple. And it, it works. So Target's happy to have it. Walmart's happy to have it because it's a high-priced volume seller that doesn't take up much shelf space. And it's always got the entry level issues there. And Viz, or whoever is publishing the, the book at the time, they like it because inside the book, there's heavy advertisement for where you can go to get the others. And so Target and Walmart do not mind the fact that basically, you know, once somebody buys that first volume, they go off to Amazon or go to a digital store or, or wherever else. But that, that ecosystem has been created. It gets lots of eyeballs, lots of attention. People read it. And then they know where to go to get the next issue. Now, here's the thing. Where they go to get the next issue is not the local comic shop. The local comic shop is spread out all over the place, has different formats of what they do, different you know, books that they sell, different, you know, you no know one comic store is like the other one. This one sells new comics. This one's got a pull box. This one's got a back issue collection. This one's infested with Funko. It's just, it's all over the place. And so to the, uh, you know, to the to collector, to the person looking to the store, the local comic shop, unfortunately, is not a super viable market to get anything. 
it caters to its existing customer base, the niche. And maybe if new people wander in there because they saw it on Big Bang Theory reruns, then cool. But generally speaking, there's not a heavy flow of new customers coming into the local comic shop. And this is why Manga said, we're not going to put our strategy in the local comic shop. We're going to put it in the big box stores and funnel people in that way using an entry-level product. And then we're going to get them to where they want to go for the issue 2 through 80. And it it works as a strategy. It works great. Uh, A lot of comic creators, I think they see the... uh, you know, the money, the sales, and then more importantly, they see the people talking about on Twitter. And they desperately wish that, you know, people were talking about that. I mean, Tom King would love for people to be talking about his Danger Street series the same way people talk about Chainsaw Man. He, he, would, he would enjoy that. But the, the volumes are, are nowhere close to the same. And whether or not you even take the actual quality of the content into consideration, um, there's no way those two could be anywhere close to the same because look at how they're sold and where they're sold. One issue of DC's Danger Street costs almost as much as the first volume of My Hero Academia. Uh, you have to go and, and search out where to find Danger Street, a local comic shop, assuming the shop even ordered enough copies because it's, it's highly unlikely most shops are ordering more than five copies of that thing for the shelf. Even big shops. They're just, it's not a volume seller. Meanwhile, you could go to any one of a thousand stores in the United States and find this other book. So, I mean, it's just, the game is over before you even crack the cover. And it's just a reality of how the, the, the markets have worked. So then you can get into the quality aspect. And I think this is where absolutely, you know, quality is subjective and the kinds of stories you read are subjective. No doubt about it. No doubt about it at all. However, I, I like to use this analogy. I use it on Twitter. You know, there are people who love RC Cola. Nothing wrong with that. They're welcome to that opinion, and that's their favorite drink, and that's just that's what they go for. But if you were to say, well, yeah, RC Cola has the same sales record, same quality, you know, it's, it's all subjective, so it's just the same as Coke or Pepsi, you're out of your mind. There's a material difference there. You can like whatever you want, but that doesn't make it the majority winner or anywhere close to the majority winner. And that's where comics has a bit of a problem because people are, are hung up in the, well, you know, quality is subjective. So, you know, who's, who's, uh, who are we to say whether one comic is better than another? Well, sales. Sales will tell you that. And a commercially viable product like, you know, say a My Hero Academia or a Coca-Cola is priced to sell in the right stores to sell and has achieved you know, commercial success, however they did it. Maybe it was commercials, maybe it was the amount of sugar they put in there. Who the F knows? But it won. And so you're, you're certainly welcome to your taste and to your opinion, but you're not welcome to your own reality. And the, the reality right now is that, yeah, manga is doing tremendously better than a lot of the uh, you quote-unquote Western U.S. comics. And it's doing better. The distribution, how people can find it, the marketing, all these different factors are why it's doing better. But another reason is subjectively, more people enjoy manga and its storytelling than the Western comic right now. From, so from a commercial standpoint, yeah, it's better. Your, your opinions do not have to align to commercial success, by the way. But you can't deny that the commercial success isn't out there. It's just the way it works. So, anyway, I, I mean, all these things uh, considered, I, it's it's a it's a funny marketplace. So, do creators uh, hate manga? Some do because they're jealous of it, because they don't like people talking about it, because they hate this argument of like, well, manga is better. They just hate seeing that on Twitter, and so they hate it. Quite a few creators like manga. There's a lot of creators I talk to who are up to speed, reading the manga, reading manga, enjoying those books, totally into it. They don't know why it's doing better. And I've had this conversation. It's like, well, it's sold in roughly 500 times more places. And I always get this kind of blank stare like, huh, hadn't thought about that before. Well, it turns out that's pretty, pretty big, pretty big, <laughs> pretty big deal. It matters. So anyway. 
Um, I, I, but no, I, I haven't encountered a lot of creators who just silently seething about manga other than kind of jealousy of, of what's selling well and what isn't, uh, for what it's worth. Anyway, thanks for the question. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for listening.